This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Good morning and welcome to worship at Nicomas Heights Lutheran Church. I'm Pastor Marla Rotman and I'm so glad that you chose to worship with us this morning. Go ahead and say hello and give your greetings in the comments on the YouTube channel. And uh, let's welcome everyone to worship together, especially those who are new. If you're new and worshiping with us, feel free to introduce yourself in the comments on the YouTube page so that we know who we're worshiping with. We really do want to make sure that everyone feels welcome. We're just glad that you're with us today. Let's go to worship together. People of God, let us go to God in a time of confession, and in seeking forgiveness, let us pray. Gracious God, we thank you for making one human family of all the peoples of the earth and for creating all the wonderful diversity of churches. Enrich our lives by ever widening circles of fellowship and show us your presence in those who differ most from us. For the racism that denies dignity to those who are different, Lord, forgive us. Lord, have mercy. For the racism that recognizes prejudice in others and never in ourselves, Christ, forgive us. Christ, have mercy. For the racism that will not recognize the work of your spirit in other cultures, Lord, forgive us. Lord, have mercy. Forgive those of us who have been silent and apathetic in the face of racial intolerance and bigotry, both overt and subtle, public and private and take away the arrogance and hatred that infect our hearts. Break down the walls that separate us and help us to find the unity that is the fruit of righteousness that will enable us to become your beloved community. Empower us to speak boldly for justice and truth and help us to deal with one another without hatred or bitterness, working together with mutual forbearance and respect. And work through our struggles and confusion to accomplish your purposes. O oh God of unconditional love, you who show no partiality in respect to people or nations, we have heard your good news of great joy for all the people. We hear that good news, and in hearing, believe. We know that your sanctuary is a house of worship for all people, with no regard for the color of our skin. As we worship you, knit us into a people, a seamless garment of many colors. May we celebrate our unity made whole in our diversity. Forgive us for our inability to let our old selves die to the world. We acknowledge that we participate in structures that are inherently racist, and yet we do nothing to remedy it. Show us when we fail, when we judge others according to the color of their flesh. Amen.
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. We pray together. We pray to you, almighty God, in this time of conflict. You are our refuge and our strength, a very present help in time of trouble. Do not let us fail in the face of these events. Uphold us with your love and give us the strength we need. Help us in our confusion and guide our action. Heal the hurt. Console the bereaved and afflicted. Protect the innocent and helpless. And deliver any who are still in peril. For the sake of your great mercy in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The reading today is from Romans chapter 5, beginning at verse 1. We are no longer God's enemies, but have peace with God because we were brought into a right relationship with God through Christ's death. The reading. Therefore, since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have obtained access to this grace in which we stand. And we boast in our hope of sharing the glory of God. And not only that, but we also boast in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope, and hope does not disappoint us, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit that has been given to us. For while we were still weak, at the right time Christ died for the ungodly. Indeed, rarely will anyone die for a righteous person, though perhaps for a good person someone might actually dare to die. But God proves his love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. The word of the Lord. The Gospel according to Matthew, the ninth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. The mission of Jesus' followers is to continue the mission of Jesus himself. Here, he instructs his first disciples as to how they might proclaim the Gospel through their words and deeds. The Gospel reading. Then Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues and proclaiming the good news of the kingdom and curing every disease and every sickness. When he saw the crowds, he had compassion for them because they were harassed and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, The harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore ask the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. Then Jesus summoned his twelve disciples and gave them authority over unclean spirits to cast them out and to cure every disease and every sickness. These are the names of the twelve apostles, First, Simon, also known as Peter, and his brother Andrew, James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John, Philip and Bartholomew, Thomas and Matthew, the tax collector, James, son of Alphaeus and Thaddeus, Simon the Canaan, and Judas Iscariot, the one who betrayed him. These twelve Jesus sent out with the following instructions. Go nowhere among the Gentiles and enter no town of the Samaritans, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. As you go, proclaim the good news. The kingdom of heaven has come near. Cure the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the lepers, cast out demons. You received without payment, give without payment. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Good morning. Welcome. I hope you're all doing well. Were you listening to the reading that was just read a couple minutes ago? Probably not. There were lots of big words in it. Things like justified and grace, 
stuff that maybe even grown-ups don't quite have a handle on. But there were a couple of words that I'd like to talk about that I think you can understand. The first one is hope. H-O-P-E, hope. Have you ever hoped for something? Like maybe a special birthday gift or something for Christmas? Or maybe you hoped that you would go somewhere with your family? I used to do a lot of hoping when I was a kid. Usually it was on the playground when they were choosing teams. And I would hope not to be chosen last. I wasn't a very good sports person. I couldn't throw or bat or catch very well. And so I often was chosen last. But I always hoped I wouldn't be. You know, that kind of hoping is more like wishing. We don't know what the outcome will be for the most part. We just wish that it will be the way we want it to be. It's like blowing out your candles on your birthday cake and making a wish. But hope in the Bible is a little bit different. We can hope in God because we know God will be there. The meaning of hope in the Bible is it's something sure. We know what's going to happen because we know that God will be with us today, tomorrow, and forever. How do we know that? Because we belong to God and God loves us. That brings up the second word, love. The Bible talks a lot about love. God sent Jesus to show us how much God loves us. We might not think we deserve God's love. We might not think we're good enough, kind of like me on the playground. But that's not true. God loves us as we are. God comes to us and claims us just the way we are. Nothing can separate us from the love that God has for us. So hope and love go together. I've got another picture that shows it a little bit better. Our reading today says we have God's love poured into us by the Holy Spirit, and that gives us hope. So when you see the cross, you can remember how much God loves you and is with you today, tomorrow, and forever. Thanks for listening. It's not easy to read the Romans passage these days, especially with the condition our world is currently in. Romans speaks of gifts like faith, peace, grace, hope, endurance, and character. It might as well add angel's wings, pixie dust, and fairy wishes to the list. It's just sometimes that hard to believe. It says, hope does not disappoint us, but I wonder how many of us have been disappointed by hope in recent years. I had a feeling of hopelessness when I heard about the death of George Floyd a couple weeks ago. I had a feeling of hopelessness when I heard about all the families being separated at the borders and placed into cages. I had a feeling of hopelessness when I learned about the shooting that took place in Las Vegas at Stoneman Douglas High School or at the Pulse nightclub in Orlando. I felt hopeless when I learned about the Flint, Michigan water crisis. I felt hopeless when Trayvon Martin was killed. Over the last few years, hopelessness has become rather normative. I remember the feeling of hopelessness I felt on November 9th, 2016. I'd gone to bed early the night before, too stressed out by the elections to watch and listen for the results to come in. I didn't want to experience the nerve-wracking journey as each district submitted its votes. Why subject myself to the anxiety of watching the needle waffle between Clinton and Trump? There were so many reasons that Trump couldn't be president. The things he said behind closed doors were too egregious. The number of women who accused him of assault too high. 
the number of failed businesses and scandals and bankruptcies too obvious. There was no way Trump would be elected. I had hope that everything would be okay in the morning. When I wake up, I thought to myself, history will have been made and Clinton will be president. We'll look back on this day as a close call, an embarrassing joke. But that's not what happened, is it? The next day, all hope was lost. It took me by such surprise. I don't know that I've ever been so disappointed before. Admittedly, my faith was shook that day. That's what hopelessness can do. It can jar our faith and set us off course. So when a book like Romans promises things like hope and peace and grace, I have to wonder, what does this mean when the world seems hopeless and peaceless? In today's passage, the first thing we read is, therefore, since we are justified by faith. This is the first good news of the day. It doesn't say since we can be, or since we will be, or even since there's a possibility we might be. No, it says since we are justified by faith. This gift of justification is straight from God through Christ Jesus for all of us. Justification means we've become aligned to God. That something, that's something that we could never do on our own, but that God can make happen and did make happen. It's as though we were off track, headed in the wrong direction, a few degrees off, and God justified us by faith. It wasn't something we did. It was something God did. God corrected our aim and realigned us directionally. Because we have been freely justified, we now have access to God's grace and hope. When I was growing up, I was taught the meaning of grace and mercy this way. Grace is getting what you don't deserve. Mercy is not getting what you do deserve. By justifying us to God through Christ, we receive grace. It's a redemption we didn't earn. Romans goes on to say that while we were still weak, at the right time, Christ died for the ungodly. God's love is proven in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. And because we are free from the tyranny of sin, we can have hope. But like I said in the beginning, hope is hard, especially when it seems like we're living in a worst case scenario. It's hard to have hope when day after day, day we are faced with a reality we never expected to have to face. That's why we need God and we need each other. Let me explain. When I was in seminary, some issues from my past resurfaced in my life, issues that led me to question my worth, my capability, and my call. Being back in school dug up these issues and created huge boulders to my learning and to my growth. They were so huge that they seemed insurmountable. So I went to therapy to try to work out the issues and discover their origin. I remember on one particular day sitting in my counselor's office. My feet were tucked up under me, my arms wrapped around a couch pillow, and I was crying with utter hopelessness. I thought I had dealt with these issues already. I thought I had grown past them. I thought I could trust myself again. I confessed to my counselor, I have no hope. No hope that my life will ever be free of these issues. But then my counselor said something I'll never forget. 
She said, that's okay. It's okay that you have no hope because I have hope for you. I believe in you and I will have hope for you until you are able to hope again. I can't tell you how relieved I was to hear that. I didn't need to believe in myself because Selene, my counselor, was willing to believe in me. I didn't need to have hope for the future because Selene was willing to hope for me. It was as though she had told me I was allowed to hurt, allowed to struggle, allowed to be sad. But it was more than that. She was also telling me it wouldn't last forever. One day soon, I would believe again in my worth, my capability, and my call. I wouldn't be hopeless forever. That's what Jesus has done for us and what we need to do for each other. 2 Corinthians 1 verses 3 and 4 say, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and the God of all consolation, who consoles us in all affliction, so that we may be able to console those who are in any affliction with the consolation with which we ourselves are consoled by God. God is the God of all mercies and consolation, who consoles us in our afflictions so that we can console others who are afflicted. That's what these verses in Romans are telling us, that we've been justified and can boast in our hope and even in our suffering because God is a God of mercy and grace. Until we are able to hope again, God will hope for us. God will hold out hope on our behalf until we can be the hope bearers for others. Today, you may be feeling a bit hopeless. You may be looking at the world and wondering if there is a God at all. If that's true for you, I want you to know it's okay. Because today, God has enough hope for the both of us. Today, God will hold out hope for you until you are ready to hold out hope for someone else. Because you will find hope again. That's the promise we have in Christ. The promise of a better world to come. The promise of hope. Amen.
Let us pray together, called into unity with one another and the whole creation. Let us pray for our shared world. Holy One, you bring us together and call us your own. Bless theologians, teachers, and preachers who help us grow in faith, especially during such tumultuous times. Guide your church that we might be a holy people. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Holy One, we have created divisions you will not own. In places of conflict, especially around our city and country, raise up leaders who work to develop lasting peace and reconciliation. Encourage organizations and individuals to care for all people, regardless of the color of their skin. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Holy One, you care for those who are harassed and helpless. Protect and defend those who are abused. Heal those who are sick. Feed all who hunger. Empower all whose voices go unheard. And help us respond to the pressing needs of our neighbors. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Receive these prayers, O God, and those too deep for words. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Please join me in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. Take a moment and share Christ's peace with whoever you're worshiping with. And if you're not worshiping with anyone, feel free to send an email or a text or a Snapchat. At this point, we receive with gratitude any offerings that you would like to contribute to the ministry and mission here at the church. And I also want to say thank you for all of the donations that have been pouring in for supplies that are needed in the inner city of Minneapolis. Uh, CES will be getting a delivery of those supplies probably at the end of this week. So if you want to drop anything off at the church, make sure you do it soon. And thank you again for being so generous. this time, let us pray to God in gratitude of God's generosity. 
Merciful God, you open wide your hand and satisfy the need of every living thing. Open our hands to receive you. Open our hearts to embrace you. Open our lives to live in you. We pray this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Good morning, everyone. My name is Amy Snedding, and I'm the Director of Youth Ministry here at Nokomis Heights Lutheran Church. I also am serving on the call committee, and I'm pleased to announce that there's a Zoom all-congregational meeting on June 28th at 11 a.m. The purpose of this meeting is to vote on a candidate for senior pastor brought forth by the call committee. Please mark your calendars, and we hope to see you there. Neither death nor life nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. God the Creator, Jesus the Christ, and the Holy Spirit the Comforter bless you and keep you in eternal love. Amen. of God, go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Amen.